Hello and welcome to another Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 2, Lesson 7 on 1 to 1 functions. Let's jump right into this since this is a brand new topic for you. Special type of function. Functions can be divided into various categories based on shared characteristics. And we do this with everything, not just functions, but you know, plant life and you know, stars and all sorts of things, right? We group things by shared characteristics. Now, one category is comprised of functions known as one-to-one. -one. The following exercise will illustrate the difference between a function that is one-to-one -one and one that is not. So, let's take a look at exercise number one. Consider two simple functions given by the equations f of x equals 2x and g of x equals x squared. Letter A. Map the domain negative 2, 0, 2 using each function. Fill in the range and show the mapping arrows. All right, let's do this together. So f of x is simply the function 2 times x. So this is easy enough, right? Negative 2. Negative 2 is going to be mapped to negative 4. 0 is going to be mapped to 0, and 2 is going to get mapped to 4, right? So all I'm doing is taking each one of the inputs, multiplying by 2, and I'm getting the output. Now for g of x, what I'm doing is I'm squaring it, okay? So negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be 4. 0 times 0 is going to be 0. And 2 times 2 is also going to be 4. So I'm not going to actually write down a 4 again because I don't do that, right? I don't end up writing down the elements more than once, even if they occur more than once. All right, so now let's take a look at letter B. What is fundamentally different between these two functions in terms of how the elements of this domain get mapped to the elements of the range? All right, so there is a very, very specific and hopefully clear difference between what's going on in these two. Pause the video and see if you can note what that difference is. Now, of course, you might be like, well, the range here doesn't have any negatives and the range here does. And that's not, of course, what I want you to get out of this. What I want you to get out of this is that for this function, each input gets a unique output. Whereas in this function, one of the outputs got repeated. So two inputs have the same output. All right, so let's get that down. For f of x, each input gets a unique output, a unique output. For g of x, one of the outputs is repeated. Okay, now, a little spoiler alert. This function is one-to-one, -one, and this function is not. And we call this function one-to-one -one because literally one x value gets mapped with its own y value, one y value. They pair up, right? As opposed to here, not one-to-one -one because these two x values get the same y value. And let's define that more formally. One-to-one -one functions. Let's take a look at its definition. A function f of x is called one-to-one -one if for every x1 and x2 in the domain of f of x, such that x1 doesn't equal x2, f of x1 doesn't equal f of x2. In other words, different x values always give different y values. All right, let's talk about this a little bit. The farther you go in math, the more you're going to get very symbolic definitions of certain things. And I, again, I, you know, I and lots of people who've studied upper level math love it, right? And this basically just says, hey, look, if I got two x values that aren't the same, their outputs aren't going to be the same. That's what a one-to-one -one function is. Now, remember, in that last example, when we had f of x equals x squared, and x squared is a poster boy of like a not one-to-one -one function, because if you take like three and negative three, they're both gonna have outputs of nine. You know, 10 and negative 10, both have outputs of, of 100, right? 
But in a one-to-one -one function, like f of x equals two times x, every different x value gets its own y value. Now, why one-to-one -one functions are important, we will actually see in the next lesson. But we're going to wait until then to really understand their importance. In this lesson, we're just going to play around with them some. So let's take a look at exercise number two. Of the four tables below, one represents a relationship where y is a one-to-one -one function of x. Determine which it is and explain why the others are not. Okay, so all four of these okay, represent relationships between x and y, but only one of them represents a one-to-one -one functional relationship. Pause the video now and see if you can figure out which one it is. All right, well, if you figured out that the correct answer was three, awesome. But this problem also asks us to determine which one it is, which is choice three, and explain why the others are not one-to-one -one functions. Well, let's start with choice one. Choice one is not a one-to-one -one function because it's not a function, right? And it's not a function because it has repeated inputs. Right? The input of four has two different outputs, and the input of nine has two different outputs. So this isn't a function. So you can't be a one-to-one -one function if you're not even a function. And let me just put this down. Repeated x values. All right. Now let's take a look at choice two. Now, choice two is definitely a function because there are no repeated input values, but there are repeated output values, right? An x value of negative two and an x value of zero both have output values of one. So this is a function. I don't want to put that so close. Is a function, but... repeated y values means not 1 to 1. All right, and we'll talk about number three in a second, but let's talk about number four really quickly. This one is, um, has both, ah, nope. Can't get rid of that. Has both repeated x's and y's. Number four isn't a function at all because negative two and negative two are repeated, right? And even if it were a function, it wouldn't be a one-to-one -one function because those outputs are repeated. So the key really, right, for a one-to-one -one function is that you have no repetition of inputs and you have no repeated outputs. Each x value gets a unique y value. So one-to-one, -one, no repeated x or y values. No repeated x or y values. And again, it's, that's an interesting categorization, right? This idea that like there are many functions. Most functions have repeated y values. No function has a repeated x value. But a lot of functions, square root, uh, sorry, um, squaring functions, absolute value functions, lots of functions have repeated outputs. But in a one-to-one -one function, every input is gonna get a unique output, one that hasn't occurred before. All right, so let's now talk about graphs of one-to-one -one functions. It's important to be able to tell if the graph of a relationship is not only a function, but also whether it's a one-to-one -one function. Let's take a look at that in exercise number three. Four relationships are graphed below. Answer the following questions. Letter A, Circle the two graphs above that are functions. Explain how you know they are functions. So I claim two of the four choices are functions. Which ones are they? Pause the video now and circle the two choices that are functions. All right. 
Well, choice one is a function and choice four is a function. And the quick way that we can tell that those are both functions is by using the vertical line test, right? They both pass the vertical, almost looks like a C, the vertical line test. In other words, if I draw a vertical line anywhere on these graphs, they hit the graph at most once. And that guarantees, right, that you don't have any repeated x values because a vertical line represents a constant x value. Now let's take a look at letter B. Of the two graphs you circled, which one is one-to-one? -one? Explain how you can tell from its graph. All right. Well, now I know these two are functions, and I know one-to-one -one functions should have no repeated outputs. So, which one falls into that category? Pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. All right, well maybe change now the color to red. So this is going to be our one-to-one -one function. And the reason why is literally no repeated y values. Now, how is it that you can really tell that this one does have repeated y values? Well, it's kind of simple, right? I mean, if I drew a horizontal line, those two would have the same y value. They'd have the same output. Likewise, right, these two would have the same output. And yet on this graph, if I draw any horizontal line on it, I just end up having a single y value. Now that would also be true of graph number two. The key in graph number two is it's not a function at all, so it can't be a one-to-one -one function, right? You can't be a dog if you're not a mammal, okay? That's the same thing here. You can't be a one-to-one -one function if you're not a function. So let's talk about the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test. Let's take a look. If any horizontal line drawn passes through the graph of a function at most one time, then that function is one-to-one. -one. This test works because horizontal lines represent constant y values. Hence, if a horizontal line intersects a graph more than once, an output has been repeated and it cannot be one-to-one. -one. All right, so you got the vertical line test, which says if a vertical line only hits a graph at most once, then it's the graph of a function. Follow that up by then if you draw horizontal lines on the graph and they only intersect it once and it's already the graph of a function, it's past the vertical line test, then that also means that none of the outputs have been repeated, so it is now a one-to-one -one function. Let's take a look at a last little piece in exercise number four. The spread of a rumor in a closed system follows what is known as a logistic curve. A rumor starts with two people in a closed system that has a total of 125 people. The number of people who have heard the rumor as a function of the hour since it started to spread is shown. Letter A. How can we tell it is, this is a one-to-one -one function? Well, we just talked about this, but we can tell it's a one-to-one -one function because it passes both the vertical and the horizontal line tests. Both the vertical and horizontal line test. All right, let's take a look at letter B. How many hours does it take before 100 people have heard the rumor? Illustrate on the graph. All right, we'll see if you can figure this out. How many hours does it take before 100 people have heard the rumor? Now notice, with a function, most of the time, the question is asked, if I have this input, what is the output? On the other hand, this question is actually saying, 
hey, if I have an output of 100, what is the input? And with a one-to-one -one function, you can always answer that question because each output has only one input that's paired with it. And in fact, I can go up to 100 right here on the y-axis, go down here, and I find that the answer is 11 hours. And that's really key, right? With a function, the whole point of a function is if I give you the input, you can predict the output. But for most functions, you can't go in the opposite direction, i.e. if I give you the output, you can't give me a single input because there could be multiple inputs that correspond to that output. But in a one-to-one -one function, if I give you an output, there is only one input that could have given that as its output. All right, last little piece. Letter C. How fast is the number of people who have heard the rumor increasing from t equals 10 to t equals 16 hours? Pause the video now and see if you can answer this question. All right, well, let's say that the number of people is given by n. You know, how many people know the rumor at 10 hours? That is, looks like 90. And let's look at the number of people who knew it after 16 hours. That looks like 120 people. So we're really trying to find an average rate of change here. Let's do the change in n over the change in time. That's going to be 120 minus 90 all over 16 minus 10. That's going to be 30 divided by 6. And that's going to be 5 people per hour. So a very subtle way of asking you for the average rate of change without saying the average rate of change. How fast is the number of people who've heard the rumor increasing from t equals 10 to t equals 16 hour at a rate of five people per hour? That really doesn't have anything to do with one-to-one -one functions, but we want to get in those previous concepts like average rate of change wherever we can in these lessons. All right, let's summarize. So we are going to categorize functions in all sorts of different ways in this course. Linear, quadratic, even, odd functions. Yes, those are coming. And in this particular lesson, we talked about functions that are one-to-one. -one. And it's a very, very simple idea. In a one-to-one -one function, every x value gets a unique y value. No y values, no outputs get repeated. And that then leads us to that horizontal line test, i.e., if a graph passes the vertical line test, well, then it's the graph of a function. And if it then passes the horizontal line test, it is the graph of a one-to-one -one function. In our next lesson, we will start to get a sense for why one-to-one -one functions are important. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.